Hello everyone, my name is Yi Chao Tui. In this video, I'm going to share our work on Chinese lesbian and bisexual women's online communities on Weibo. During this presentation, I will talk about the study design and important findings. Our work explores challenges that Chinese lesbian and bisexual women face uh, when initiating, growing, and sustaining such communities. Specifically, we focus on their online communities on Weibo. This is because Weibo uh, is a leading microblogging website in China and is one of the largest social networking sites used by the Chinese LGBT population. Based on prior research, Chinese lesbian and bisexual women in particular use Weibo to share information uh, that is relevant to their identities, facilitate discussions, and also connect with other lesbian and bisexual female users. Chinese lesbian and bisexual women still experience stigma and isolation due to collectivist culture and censorship. However, how Chinese online communities for lesbian and bisexual women um, uh, confront and also mitigate the challenges of a broadly hostile online environment remains largely unexplored. And existing research here focuses on challenges uh, that Western LGBT people have when they build and maintain online communities. For example, it is still not easy uh, for online, med online social media platforms to protect various aspects of their user safety and privacy. And there also might exist like harassment from outsiders, uh, such as like heterosexual males and females uh, who use fake accounts to infiltrate LGBT online communities. And they may also spread hate speech inside of them. And also insider harm, as you can see here, is another challenge uh, which is committed by members of the same group and involves uh, stigmatization, invalidation, and also erasure uh, targeted at other users. And apart from these, uh, censorship on social media platforms may also block LGBT people's exchange of social support um, and hamper the process of their building online communities. And research has also in indicated that Western LGBT research findings are not congruent with Asian reality, um, and in particular when it comes to people's online community building practices. And therefore, there's a need to understand Chinese lesbian and bisexual women's online communities in order to make social media platforms become more inclusive for LGBT online communities in non-Western cultural contexts. And in this study, we hope to understand Chinese lesbian and bisexual women's needs and behavior uh, in building online communities. And we also want to provide insights into how to design social media in order to make them become more inclusive for LGBT and also other stigmatized populations. There are mainly three research questions to guide our study. Uh, the first question is, how and why have lesbian and bisexual women initiated online communities on Weibo? The second question is, uh, what have been lesbian and bisexual women's challenges to growing those online communities? And the last one is, what have been lesbian and bisexual women's challenges to sustaining those online communities? And in our study, we first reached out to four lesbian bloggers on Weibo and asked them if they want to participate in the study and whether they are willing to invite more members from their own online communities. And in the end, we successfully recruited four bloggers and 36 members in total, um, and 24 of them are lesbian women and 16 of them are bisexual women. And now let's take a look at our results. First, we found that the bloggers' community building uh, was largely unintentional. Uh, they were motivated to build online communities because they felt a strong obligation to speak for the wilder Chinese LGBT women's community. 
Uh, as one blogger said here, uh, lesbian and bisexual women lack space to exchange ideas and speak up for ourselves. So it is necessary to build more online communities that gather lesbian and bisexual women and also allow us to communicate freely. And we also found that bloggers facilitated mutual support within their communities, encouraged members to learn from others, identity-related experiences, and also strove to make their blog's members feel cared for by the community. For example, bloggers published posts on members' behalf to discuss certain information. Uh, they also helped members uh, to form offline relationships, and they communicated directly with members via private messages. And it also should be noted that these bloggers uh, also adopted collaborative efforts with members uh, to deal with outsiders' infiltration. For example, if outsiders engaged in harmful behaviors, uh, such as harassing members or leaving discriminatory comments, uh, the bloggers would disclose uh, these malicious actors' account information in their blogs. Uh, this is to alert all members and prevent them from being harmed armed by these malicious actors. Um, as B2 mentioned, the most important uh, benefit of publicizing the person's account is that, at least in my blog, people will avoid this person unless they change all their profile information or use other accounts. But generally, I publicize outsiders' accounts to increase their costs of joining and participating in my community. And we also observed that instead of blocking or backlisting uh, those who posted inflammatory comments, bloggers would respond to the members' comments and guide the discussions. However, bloggers could not entirely avoid being misunderstood and targeted by their own members. Uh, and as B3 said here, uh, if I directly reply to a member by saying that I don't agree with her, she may be cyberbullied by any other members. Uh, but no matter how well I try to elaborate my thoughts and how thoroughly I discuss the nuances of certain topics, there are always some people who misinterpret my ideas and cyberbully me because their own perspectives are totally different. And lastly, we found that the bloggers adopted various strategies for avoiding the attention of censorship algorithms, uh, ranging from verbal techniques like using homophones of sensitive words, puns, coded language, and splitting Chinese characters, to uploading photos that contained text. Uh, as B1 mentioned here, before posting photos that, that I think I might get blocked, I usually edit them by adding several strokes to them. Um, sometimes it really helps photos to uh, survive automatic detection. And the takeaways of the study include uh, enhanced privacy settings by allowing members to display their uh, data based on their networks, set up invite-only uh, communities or membership approval mechanisms, detect malicious accounts behaviors, and develop tools that can not only perform automatic tasks in moderation, but also have empathetic responses. And this is the end of this presentation. Thank you all for listening.